Where do you think is the significance of the field? Why is that research important to understand interactions within organisms? It's uh, uh, really the main question about our work on the holo genome. And I would say the most important thing is that nobody is a single organism. We are all uh, a mixture of symbionts, maybe one big one and many small ones, or many small ones together, but that's the essence of the importance of the whole thing. We are never alone, never alone. We have been evolved from combinations of microorganisms and we remain so, bigger and smaller together. May you summarize very briefly the main finding and the theory which you put together to provide us and the whole community a conceptual framework how to address and how to approach that problem? First of all, we are always a mixture of uh, organisms together. Secondly, uh, this mixture is transmitted from one generation to the next, which makes it genetically stable, more or less. Thirdly, that uh, the ability to variate genetically, uh, we have much more uh, possibilities of genetic variation uh, between, uh, within the holobiont and hologenome. And finally, this gives us many more opportunities to evolve uh, a better situation, a greater fitness. That's, I think, the main point of our theory. Where do you see this type of research uh, should be or could be in 10 or 20 years? Uh, I see two main ways in which it's going to develop. The first is biologically. Uh, the more we learn about the microbes and how many there are and, and what they're doing and functioning, the more we'll understand organisms and the more we'll understand evolution. The main driving force in evolution, in our opinion, is not mutation that has been thought about for a hundred years, mutation, but more likely the uptake of of uh, microbial genes and microbes themselves. Uh, as one physicist once told me, when I told him it makes much more sense to take genes that are already developed rather than to make new ones by evolution, because bacteria have done this, he said, yeah, it's like an app. When I want an app, I, I don't uh, make my own app. I take somebody else's app and put it in. So I think evolution proceeds that way. The second important thing is the applied aspect in terms of human health and animal health. Uh, I see the day, as we learn more about what microbes are doing, is that when you, you get sick, you, you go to a microbiologist, not to a doctor, to give you the right kinds of microbes or the right kind of food to develop the right kinds of microbes. And I think it will have a major impact on both preventive medicine and curing and diagnosis. Is there a need to change, A, the treatment of the patients, but also the training of the people? It's made tr tremendous impact in the last few years, and it will make even more. I mean, what's, what many people know about is the fecal transplant, that there was diseases of diarrhea that could not be treated with antibiotics, and if you give them a mixture of antibiotics from a healthy, a, a, a microbes from a healthy person, you can cure that disease. I think many doctors know about that already. But they're just beginning to learn about it. And I think it will feed back to the education, certainly the education of medical doctors in the future.